we were all busy, busy, busy this week, playtesting, bug testing, fixing, polishing, doing all sorts of things, a thousand different things um, that we need to do to get the game ready for uh, early access release for PC and Mac on July 25th, later this month. So today's post will be fairly short. We're gonna look at just one cool new thing. So last week I talked about some of the performance impacts of a game like Wolf Quest, which is set in this vast open world environment like Yellowstone. And we're doing our best as an indie game with a limited budget to, uh, to depict Yellowstone as accurately and beautifully as we can. But there are still technical constraints. And one of them is faraway shadows. And I've spent uh, over two years bothered by this and trying to find solutions for this. So shadows, you can see some shadows being drawn here, the tree and, and my wolf and such, and those are being, those are very intensive to draw. And even with the old game, Wolf Quest 2.7, you will notice that shadows are definitely part of the quality settings and on uh, older, weaker hardware, you have to crank down or, or turn off the shadows in order for it to run well. And that just ramps up um, the bigger the area that you want shadows to uh, be drawn on, the bigger the impact. And for a big open world, like Wolf Quest, with uh, the map is seven by seven kilometers, but we have these view sheds going out, you know, 20 kilometers away. You just can't have shadows out there. And so as a result, you get views like this. So you have all these trees, but the shadows, you can see they kind of fade out down the slope there. And then, especially in the forest, the forest just looks a little thin because the ground is lit just as brightly by the sun as it is out in the, in the open grasslands. Just doesn't look quite right. Um, and that was just something I figured I would have to live with. And that was the case until last week when I started talking to Jorge Paz, who is an amazing uh, rendering expert and graphics programmer uh, in Quebec. We'd already been using some cool stuff from Jorge on the grass shadows. And so here it is without these special grass shadows and here it is with them. And so this makes a big difference, obviously, in giving some three dimensionality. I showed this in the video what, last summer uh, about the grass, but now he's come up with something even more amazing, an amazing method to draw shadows basically to infinity. So check this out. I'm gonna turn on these infinite shadows here. Boom, look at that. It just gives the whole scene some more depth. So look at this, if you can look in the middle of the screen, those trees are not getting the, the normal shadows, they're getting these special, it's called screen space shadows. Um, I'll turn off, turn it on. It's just, I was pretty excited um, when he started showing me how this was gonna work. And in that distant forest, it just adds some darkness to the ground so it looks more like a forest. And even these mountains, when the sun is low, even these mountains will cast shadows on the valley and on the mountain even across from them when the sun is really low. So here, let's speed up time a little bit and see how the shadows work all, all the way out to the horizon there. You, you can see the trees casting shadows out to infinity. You can see the mountains casting shadows, both the mountain we're on as well as across the valley out to infinity. It's just pretty astounding to me at least to have this kind of thing in the game. And you are just working on more shadow improvements. So we are really excited to be um, getting the benefit of his amazing work and uh, bringing it to Wolf Quest, both for the initial release and going forward, whatever cool stuff he comes up with. So I think that's pretty fantastic, but the videos with animals do generally get more views. So here you go. 